A cop discovers a frail little boy in a small trailer after a 911 call was made for his rescue. The cop was alarmed to discover that the boy's mother had been sleeping beside him, needing immediate medical attention. Before we start, we can get this video to 1,000 likes. Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. In the dead of night, a 911 dispatcher received a call from a little boy who sounded weak. Hello, can somebody help me? I haven't had a proper meal in three days, and I'm getting dizzy, the boy spoke weakly. The dispatcher immediately notified the police to be on standby as she requested details on the boy's whereabouts. He described his neighborhood and revealed that he found a couple of pennies lying around the trailer he lived in, which he used to call on the payphone. Please come help me. I don't know how much time I have left, the boy said. Help is on the way, sweetheart. Go back to your trailer and stay there until the cops arrive, okay? The dispatcher replied before hanging up the phone. In just a couple of minutes, an officer named Jason Parker was sent to the scene. This better not be one of those prank calls again, he said to himself as he drove towards the trailer. He immediately knocked on the trailer door and introduced himself when he got there. Officer Parker here responding to a 911 call. Is anybody home? Nobody answered the door, but he could hear a faint voice coming from inside. He entered and saw a frail little boy clutching his stomach as he lay on the ground. Help me, the boy whispered. As Officer Parker took another step inside, he realized that the boy was not alone. On a small, worn-out mattress, a woman was asleep. Ma'am? He called out, trying to wake her up. She did not respond, so Officer Parker decided to check her pulse. It was weak and slow. What is your name, young boy? My name is Adam. My mom's name is Lisa. The boy replied quietly. How long have you and your mother been here? What happened? The officer asked. Mommy lost her job at the factory four days ago. Since she doesn't have work, we have not been able to eat these past three days, the boy said in tears. My mom is weak and does not want to wake up. We need to help her. At this point, Officer Parker knew he had to act quickly. He called for medical backup so they could take Lissa to the hospital. When the ambulance arrived, they carried Lisa on a stretcher, while Adam rode with Officer Parker in his patrol car. Your mom will be all right, Adam. Don't worry about it, he assured the worried child. The doctors diagnosed Lisa as malnourished, believing that she hadn't been eating properly even before she lost her job. They suggested she remain in the hospital until she regained her strength and made a full recovery. What's going to happen to me while mommy is in the hospital? Adam said, suddenly scared after hearing that his mother would have to stay there for a while. There are social workers here who can take you to a foster family for the time being. When your mom has recovered, you'll be able to see her again, Officer Parker explained. At that point, Adam began to cry. A foster family? I don't want to be sent there. Please, Officer Parker, do something. He sobbed. As Officer Parker was a bachelor, he realized that he was capable of taking care of the child for the weeks that his mother would be in the hospital. He asked the social workers if it was possible, and when they said it was, they prepared the paperwork. While waiting for the paperwork, he decided to take Adam to somewhere he could eat. You must be very hungry. How about a good meal at a restaurant? He asked a young boy. Yes, thank you, Officer Parker, Adam said, clinging to the officer's arm as if they'd known each other for years. The gesture melted Jason's heart and made him wonder why he hasn't settled down and started his own family. Adam and Officer Parker enjoyed a nice balanced meal of protein, carbs, and vegetables so that Adam could slowly regain his strength and energy. By the time they finished their meal, the little boy was feeling a lot better and was able to talk a lot more. He shared that it had always just been him and his mom living in the trailer after his father abandoned them when he was a baby. While his mom worked at the factory, he often walked to and from school and waited for his mom to come home. Unfortunately, a budget cut caused his mother to lose her job, and they had no spare money to buy even the most simple food items. I'm happy you came to get us, Officer Parker. 
I was so hungry and I was so scared my mommy would die. The boy explained. Officer Parker was heartbroken to hear about Adam's story, and he made a promise to himself that he would help Adam and Lisa as much as he could. When they got back to the hospital, it was revealed that he was approved as Adam's foster father and he could take him home that night. Adam said goodbye to his mom and promised he'd be back the following day. Jason prepared the spare bedroom in his apartment for Adam to sleep in and told him to sleep as long as he wanted, as it was already late. The following morning, Jason prepared food for Adam and his mom Lisa. He always enjoyed cooking, and he was glad to have people to share his dishes with now. Adam woke up a little before lunchtime and was delighted to see that there was food on the table. Thank you, Officer Parker, he said in delight. You don't need to call me Officer Parker. Just call me Jason, he said with a smile as he put some food on Adam's plate. After Adam finished eating, they headed to the hospital where Lisa was already conscious. Mom! Adam exclaimed, running to hug his mom, who was in her hospital bed. Hey, sweetie! Lisa said, stroking Adam's head as he leaned on her stomach. I'm so happy to see you. Mom, this is Officer Parker. I mean Jason. He took care of me after he found us at home. He made you some food, too," he said excitedly. Lisa glanced at Jason and smiled. "'Thank you so much for your kindness, Jason,' she said, and Jason was taken aback by Lisa's beauty, not realizing it the first time they met. "'You're welcome. It's no problem. You have a sweet boy. Don't worry about him. I'll take care of him. Just focus on getting well,' Jason told Lisa who nodded appreciatively. Every day, Jason would care for Adam. He cooked him meals, took him to school in his patrol car, and accompanied him to the hospital when Adam's school and his police work were done for the day. After a couple of weeks, Lisa made a full recovery and was cleared to go home. Adam was saddened that he would no longer be seeing Jason every day, but Jason promised he'd visit. Every time he visited Adam, he got to know Lisa a little more and the more they talked to each other, the more they started to feel a connection. Eventually, they admitted their feelings for each other. Jason and Lisa ended up falling in love, and they got married in a simple civil ceremony with Adam as their witness. Adam was delighted to have Jason as his father, and eventually, their family grew when they welcomed a baby girl nine months later. I can't believe a response to a 911 call would lead me to find a family, Jason told his new wife Lisa one day. Who would have thought? Lisa said, leaning on Jason's shoulder. I can't believe I'm fortunate enough to have someone as kind, caring, and generous as you as my partner for life. No matter how bad life gets, always remember that people will be ready to help you. I'll always be here for you and Adam, Jason said, assuring Lisa as they embraced.